Welcome to China Insider. I'm David Zhang. I was recently asked about the World Economic Forum and how it's similar to or different from the Chinese Communist Party. The two entities both want to create a global government, and of course, we know the World Economic Forum is the brain behind this globalist government agenda or system rooted in the leftist agenda. Now, the Chinese Communist Party, on the other hand, is especially from the same root of the radical leftist thinking, and that is the evolution of communism, socialism, and the agenda that follows, which created a communist international back in the Soviet Union days. But today, Xi Jinping definitely wants to create that again. And we can definitely see that from this point, Chinese leader Xi Jinping's grand plan to create a so-called community of common destiny, ideologically both are rooted in the globalist vision. One world governance. But aside from creating a global government, what else do they have in common? Well, I think Klaus Schwab is so envious of Xi Jinping's ability to control 1.4 billion people, an entire country using censorship and surveillance, as it is currently in China, where hundreds of millions of cameras watch over people and facial recognition and big data drive their citizen control. Now, recently on World Economic Forum, an opinion article published by this person named Inbal Goldberg, and it basically talks about creating artificial intelligence program that could end up acting as a comprehensive global censorship tool. Now, this is of course a copycat of what the Chinese Communist Party already uses to control its own people. In the article, writer and cybersecurity expert Inbal Goldberg proposes a combining the situation where they combine powerful AI network with input from human intelligence data to track and to preemptively stop certain content from circulating online. Now, the article mentions the importance of deciphering、uh, the coded language used by child abusers and pornographers to disseminate the so-called content that has to do with、uh, cases of sensitive topics or materials. And so, by removing this content, is the justification for this total surveillance. But along with this, Goldberg also mentions that the AI would be able to be used to detect extremism, disinformation, and hate speech. Now, the way they categorize these three these、uh, three terms, I have no idea how or to what measures. But just from the past years, we've seen exactly what is categorized as hate speech, disinformation, and so on. Now Goldberg says the proposed AI program would be supplemented by quote off-platform human intelligence gathering. To what extent does this proposal actually help to eliminate child pornography or so on is still to be determined. But the idea that now you are going to surrender self freedom and the ideas of personal liberty to the global control just for the sake of controlling child pornography is that the total justification? I'm、not so sure. Now, what I do know is that after the studying of the entire communist system, which is built on controlling the world, it seems that to create a global government and global control, there needs to be an immediate control and the surrender of freedom from the people. That's often the key word, right? Surrender more to the global machine. Now, the World Economic Forum regularly invites Chinese speakers to talk about joining the global vision. And one of them recently is Ma Jun, who is a CCP banking official, who calls for mobilizing private capital to quote unquote avoid funding activities that damage nature. Meaning that if those things don't meet the environmental standards, well, they're not going to get the funding. Now, this is coming from a Chinese official. That means those who don't comply with the globalist agenda rooted in the green policies shouldn't be allowed to do business around the world. And at the World Economic Forum annual summit in March, the head of the Alibaba Group talked about a system that will monitor people's individual carbon footprints. They calculate the, and analyze them based on the their eating habits, traveling habits, and other behaviors. Now, this is all fitting into the global agenda that is the green policy or the so-called transformation of energy. And we see another parallel here. The so-called ESG score, the, envi the environmental, social, and corporate governance score, is essentially the perfect climate tool to control large corporations and individuals, right? And that's what's being implemented in the West. Meanwhile, the irony is that asking members of the Chinese Communist Party to speak on this issue, that is climate change, the CCP is the top polluter in the world. Of course, they're adding more coal-fired plants as we speak, and they're promising over and over again that they're going to be carbon neutral by 2030 or 2050. 
well, while they're being allowed by all governments around the world to continue with the path as the current number one in carbon emission. Perhaps inviting them to speak at the World Economic Forum is a little ironic. Or perhaps Klaus Schwab's favorite speaker from the entirety of the event has to be Xi Jinping himself, who he invited to speak in January of this year. Now, since the early days of Xi Jinping, he has been talking about the so-called community of common destiny or a community of shared future mankind. And the idea is that everyone in the world should share the same values or the same set of standards, as we call it. And that's going to, of course, be dominated by the Chinese Communist Party themselves and the teachings of Marxism. And in other words, it's going to be the global set of values that are favorable and are dictated by the leftist and as well as the communists. And it would be set out to be an ideological and spiritual agenda for the entire world to see and to abide by. And that's essentially the key of a global government, right? To control people and to control them politically, ideologically, and spiritually. Now, she gave this speech in January, and uh, this was at the Davos agenda. And he says, quote, the world today is undergoing major changes unseen in a century. Now, these changes, not limited to a particular moment, event, country, or region, represent the profound and sweeping changes of our times. As changes of the times combined with the once-in-a-century pandemic, the world finds itself in a new period of turbulence and transformation. How to beat the pandemic and how to build the post-COVID world, these are major issues of common concern to people around the world. There are also major urgent questions we must give answers to." End quote. Listening to that, now, this so-called unseen change in a century, the pandemic and how he later in the same speech asked for closer global cooperation is the fact that she wants to create and shape an environment in which globalism is the dominant force. But here's the catch. Xi's ambition is beyond that. He knows that to ally with the globalist and the leftist, there is eventually bound to be a point where the two sides would not be, will be in disagreement over something, right? Climate change, maybe. The military, maybe. At that point, he needs to know if the leftist, the World Economic Forum, will abide by the communist natures rather than the leftist agenda, even though they come from the same root. This is why she has been advocating for the so-called community for a shared future of mankind. Now, the World Economic Forum to Xi Jinping is just a part of helping him to achieve a global domination and the global control, this communist international of the 21st century. And the communists know that they can't outright push pure communism into the West today. So by doing it through the World Economic Forum, they've essentially undermined and destroyed the social fabric of the entire Western civilization under the disguise of climate change and world economy. And that's, I think, where we're, when we're discussing the evil nature of communism, we often neglect a point about the spiritual control of the people in China. So when you join or you're selected for the Yang Pioneer, which is a, the elementary level communist organization in every single school, or then you join the Youth League, which is the, essentially the high school version of that, and uh, you will be swearing allegiance to the communist flag and to the communist party leaders, and in doing so, it almost feels like you have been spiritually possessed by the demon that is communism. And now you are spiritually aligned with the teachings of communism and the teachings of Marxism, which is, by the way, also rooted in the murders of hundreds of millions of people around the world and its history. Now think about what the World Economic Forum and the globalist agenda pushes for. They are pushing for a spiritually aligned version or the so-called leftist version of climate change, of global peace or globalizing economy in all of these terms. And that is also spiritually done. So the ideas of global peace through the transformation of the, the climate agenda or the artificial intelligence or the global control is rather the same. And when we're really talking about what communism does to people. It's not about the political control. It's not about the, the humanism, or it's, it's not even about the technology that they've stolen from us. It's actually about how they change you spiritually. Whether that's the communist official atheist beliefs or the ideas of anti-religion or the ideas of destroying culture, all of these associate with spirits. And your spirit is what gets destroyed in the process of being converted into a communist. Now, in essence, both the CCP and the WEF they have a spiritual component that we don't often talk about, that uh, it's beyond ideology. 
It's even before you, they try to preach you their ideologies to the point of a political agenda. Without the spiritual guidance behind it, there's no, there's no better way to think of it as, a, as something other than a religious-like purpose. That is, you have to believe in their purpose first, right? The CCP wouldn't be at this level of uh, controlling China or for people to actually want to appease them if they didn't have a spiritual offer to them. Now, of course, we understand this, uh, this version of utopia to the communist is the fact that everything and everyone will be happy with not owning anything, right? Klaus Schwab talks about that. Well, as far as people go, in this world, individuality is actually rooted in a higher purpose in that people believe in something bigger than governments, something bigger than their political ideology, and something more spiritually. By destroying this purpose, you've actually destroyed the need to survive and the need to live. People die protecting and preserving freedom around the world. In the United States, it's a, it's, it's a huge value and a huge component of what made this constitution republic so powerful. And the Chinese Communist Party knows that to maximize the ambition through the so-called spiritual possession of communism, they take over the world not through violence and not through subversion or infiltration. They do so through the ideas of letting you believe in communism. So through the spiritual possession of communism, they take over the world, right? Through violence, subversion, and infiltration. And I don't think we talk too much about this in terms of, of the infiltration of communism in America today, because it's already happening here through the ideas of socialism and woke ideologies. Many people question today that uh, the Chinese Communist Party or the government isn't really the textbook definition of communism. It's more like a version of state capitalism or for the the, the, the Marxist ideas mixed with capitalism and so forth. But in China, you actually have a Bible study class like version, but for communism. And so all the communist leaders are everywhere, right? Like Lenin, Stalin. If there's no need for the system to exist, why worship these people like gods, like deities? They don't really want to rule by communism. They actually want to rule by the destruction of the faith and destruction of spirituality in itself is a religious like system where you have followers of communism doing the biddings like the acolytes of communism and we're talking about the chinese military we're talking about the people's liberation army and we're talking about the politicians talking right we're even talking about the leader himself xi jinping so we're talking about all of these people who actually are doing the bidding for the specter of communism and here's where I think the effects of the Chinese Communist Party has actually influenced that of the World Economic Forum, not just in the surveillance and censorship level, but to the level of spirituality. And that's why we see the World Economic Forum pushing all these ideas that are rooted very much into people's brains, like we need climate change, we need to have a globalizing economy, the world needs to be saved, otherwise we are doomed. Now, when they invite Xi Jinping to speak, it just shows that uh, they're adopting the ideologies without the name communism, but in essence, everything's the same. The global censorship and the need for artificial intelligence, right? All of these things are just the ideas of association of controlling freedom, controlling the conservative values, and often likely and very much condemned and demonized around the world is the values of the freedom and religious and conservative values. The World Economic Forum, I remember Thomas Sowell had this uh, great quote. I think it was along the lines of anything today that's been considered vogue, right? It has been tried before in history and it's proven to be disastrous and has failed time and time again. Yet people come back to this stuff. It really has just been the formula of failure in communism in the East and in the West. Yet the ideas now manifesting as the radical left or the uh, communist or socialist ideas in the West they're actually taking and gaining footsteps again. All the while, this is the Chinese Communist Party adopting and continuing to exist as a type of social experiment that currently has no repercussions. We've seen this during COVID-19, right? We've seen the biggest social experiments during COVID-19, where the globalist agenda met perfectly with the Chinese Communist Party, using COVID as the ch this testing ground for the experiment to see how humans are usually influenced and manipulated and controlled it's really about the radical ideology that is communism manifesting in different forms in the East and the West. And the ultimate goal is all about bringing the ruling of the world by the specter of communism in one shape or form. And thank you so much for watching tonight. This is China Insider. I'm David Zhang. We'll see you next time.